Good morning, good evening, good afternoon. Not necessarily in that order. It's the Ribs again, back on the Back to Pop podcast. Uh, we have a good one for you. Uh, an in-depth look into one of the most elegant of us. A feared big cat whose prey includes, but he's not limited to, destroyers, cruisers, battleships, and CVs. 450,000 views on YouTube and counting. Actually, slightly more than that. Almost 1,800 subscribers as well, and a fitting photo of a snarling Jaguar on the account. It's, well, the Jaguar. Thanks for joining us today. Hey, thank you very much for having me. It is really a pleasure, and I'm actually really surprised that I'm even doing this because I've listened to your uh, podcasts of the different community contributors and other high-profile players in the game uh, since February of 2021. And I would have to say that a um, few, few days after your first Spartan podcast interview is when I created my channel, For Better or For Worse. That's literally what happened. If you look at the date on my um, YouTube channel creation and look at the date of the first Spartan podcast, it was just a few days away. So I guess I can sort of blame him a little bit for this <laughs> he, he inspired blame me. him blame him or blame us you know it could be ourselves that you know encouraged you to watch it i'm sure um no we are glad to have you here to be honest and you know we don't care who you are we want to make sure that everyone gets a voice in this and you know showcases their abilities and their you know accounts their content everything about them is why we're we're here to to do what we do to advise everyone out there that we enjoy your content and i'm sure they will as well so we'll we'll have a look at that later and you'll be able to uh plug your advertisement <laughs> a, bit, a bit later on but um yeah so i to be honest i just need to know who you are um where where has the jaguar come from um in your own words what what's what's the jaguar i'm just a normal guy who likes playing computer games i have a background in it uh, back when I first started, it was um, with uh, MS-DOS and very low-level PCs, and um, things just progressed from there. I, I moved over to consoles from PCs because um, I was burnt out on patching operating systems and getting the most of everything. So the console, in theory, should have all of those patches and everything ready to go, and um, today that's not quite the case so um but yeah i'm just a normal guy that has liked playing computer games pretty much my entire life so uh probably been doing uh playing computer games for probably over 35 years wow yeah that is some career well you haven't streamed all of that right that's no <laughs> no i um it, it was the interest in computer games that allowed me to learn a lot about PCs and become the PC expert that I am today. And my background is actually um, desktop support, server support, and even computer security. Um, so, okay. yeah, so I, I'm like overly cautious of everything I'm doing uh, because of the computer security background, I, I guess, when, when it comes to creating like discord servers or even my youtube channel i'm just probably um more cautious than i should be maybe i don't know you're gonna have to do a deep dive on our server just to make sure that there's no um interesting things hiding here <laughs> you never <laughs> know i'm sure there won't be <laughs> yeah you never know you, you guys do have a good setup here i'll tell you that much well that's what we like to hear we uh we are doing this for the public um but yeah a lot of it is uh, public funded as well um, specifically from Patreon and that kind of thing so yeah we're, we're enjoying it but we're not here to talk about me or us us because yeah uh, we are here to talk about your content and you know where where it comes from what you do um, so how would you best describe it in uh, in again your own words I, I, I think the actual reason why I even considered uh, creating content for the game was to try to explain to beginning players things that confused me when I first started playing the game. I didn't know anything about doubloons or the currency. 
I was having a hard time with campaigns, trying to understand those. And so a lot of my content, I would guess, are uh, it, it's intended to help out beginner uh, beginners in the game. A lot of my content will be like personal missions, or I I go into quite a bit about the auctions that, that they had going. Um, also, racing legends. Racing legends. Um, I would have uh, a lot of content about that. So um, I, I also have reviews. Uh, as I as I understand the commanders and the ships, I try to explain um, my thinking, whether it's right or wrong. Uh, I'm sure a lot of people have a lot of different views on the way the ships are set up, but I try to create the content based on my understanding, um, for better or for worse. <laughs> So would you describe yourself as a, as a casual gamer then? Um, probably more hardcore than, than casual. Oh. Uh, bit, well, I, I do play almost every night. So that's a lot of dedication. I, I do, like when it comes to uh, World of Warships, I do still, even though I'm a community contributor now, I still do go through all the events for the most part. And... I um, try to play those through, um, but I, you know, I. It, it's hard for for me to say whether I'm hardcore or casual. I'm I'm probably right a in mix. between. Yeah, a mix. Yeah, yeah. I can I can see that. There's a lot of people out there that are the same. To be honest, I unfortunately lean into the hardcore aspect of it. I'm trying to calm it down a bit. So. Well, the the for oh, okay. So so here's the problem with the hardcore is um, the penetration angles of the shells and all sorts of the technical aspects of like the armor uh, and what shells can penetrate, what thickness of armor. I will admit that I am not a um, hundred percent. Uh, up on all that, like a lot of the other uh, content creators and community contributors. So uh, th that's why I'm vacillating between hardcore and casual because um, I, I think the hardcore players are up on all of the specific stats. You know that that can just rattle things off at the um, at the top of their uh, their head, like. Um, you know what size shell can penetrate a certain thickness of armor and things like that. I, I have an idea, but um, I, I wouldn't say that I'm a hundred percent expert at that. It's hard to it's hard to do the fourteen point three divided by in your head, isn't it? Right. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> but yeah. also remember what armor is there. That that's always been the pain for me. But also, there's so many like specific ships that have come out, which it's hard to to remember everything unless you have the cleanest memory ever it's it's probably going to be very limited as to what you can remember to do all you will generally remember is what you can and what you can't overmatch but the majority of that will be muscle memory it'll be from actually playing so being the person who plays every day i'm sure you you get used to it anyway so it you know it's one of those things isn't it but yourself you have quite a soft turn i would say a tender way to uh, to deliver words is that how you operate outside the wire, or is it um, uh, a, a character that you're putting on specifically for this? Or what do you think? Well, you, you mean like uh, no swearing and cussing? <laughs> uh, because um, back when I first started, I was one of those people that um, would get into flame wars with people on Usenet um, news servers for flight simulator. Uh, flight simulators and racing simulators and I was one of those hothead out of control um, characters that I had my day where I was um, arguing and being toxic in my own right uh, you know so I've been there done that um, I, I didn't want to do that um, kind of content or have that kind of demeanor this time around and what I found to my surprise is uh, quite a few uh, people who have visited some of my streams and, and they're not like huge streams or anything but I do have some regulars and they're like wow I can actually have my kids watch this because there's no none of that stuff and I try 
not to uh, to do that because I don't really want to be defined by that. So, um, yeah, Interesting. I, I, if I if I need to be like that to gain subscribers and get a lot of um, notoriety, um, I guess I'm not going to get a lot of notoriety because at this point in my life, I simply don't want to do it. And, I, and the thing is, I'm not going to do it just to get subscribers or just to um, be, be well known or, you know, I'm going to do what I want to do, not because that's something that everybody else is doing. And a lot of my ship reviews are like that. If I have fun with a ship, I'm going to say that I had fun with the ship, even though a lot of people that had reviews out there and the community seems to be going in the other direction, I'm not going to do that. So I'm going to do what I want to so do it for the fun. Yeah. Yeah. The, I'm a hundred percent into it because I'm having fun when I'm not having fun. Y'all won't see the Jaguar anymore. <laughs> <laughs> How's that? Yeah. So as long as I'm having fun, everything's all good. YouTube shut down. Everything's off. No more Jaguar. <laughs> hey, <laughs> one round. That's know, it. Done. <laughs> yeah. Who knows? It, uh, Quite. yeah, it can happen. It's interesting. Well, with regards to gaming, obviously World of Warships is just part of it, but what have been your initial experiences? Like you said, you've done it for 35 years. You commented a bit on uh, on Flight Sim there. Um, what what have you done before? How, how did your sort of gaming interest or career start out? So the, the first flight simulator I played was F-19 Stealth Fighter from 1988. It was a DOS game. And uh, it was really crude, almost like uh, stick drawings uh, is what the graphics were. Um, I was going to say, is it 2D? It sounds like it's 2D. <laughs> yes. Uh, and, and But it, it had like a representation of radars, and you could see like the other airplanes, and there was an indicator to show how well your stealth was operating. And it was the game that piqued my interest in, uh, in flight simulators, uh, the next game was from 1989, and that was the very first Indianapolis 500 simulation. So um, my interests include um, flight simulators as well as racing simulators, and that's why I like Racing Legends so much. I've always had um, an interest in, in uh, Formula One racing and Indy 500. Um, oh, really? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Who, and, who, who do you think? Who do you think is going to win F1 this year? And who's going to win Indy as well? It's not going to be Lewis Hamilton. It's not going to win uh, <laughs> F1. Uh, it, could be, um, it could be Verstappen again. But actually, um, so, yeah. so here's the thing about Formula One is it looks like Alonso is doing almost too well. Like they designed the Aston Martin with something that nobody knows about yet. And back when Sebastian Vettel won his four championships in a row many years ago, he did that because um, Red Bull had developed a double diffuser, which, as I remember, if he would drove the car at like 90% of its potential, he would just like win races after races after races, where his teammate, who I think was Weber at the time, he was driving a car at 100% and he was like overdriving it. So eventually... The rest of the teams found out about the double diffuser and had that outlawed, and Vettel was never the same after they outlawed the double diffuser. So I'm afraid that um, uh, Fernando Alonso and uh, Aston Martin have done something similar with their new design of their car, because that car is actually working a little bit better than it probably should, or better than a lot of people expect. So. Preseason uh, sort of showed they would be good, but I I kind yeah. of get that as well. I didn't yeah. expect it to be as yeah. well hey, performing. It could be Fernando Alonso. <laughs> <laughs> it could be, but yeah. you know, Stroll is quite consistent for the majority, and he has spent a lot of time up at the top. But, Stroll? Um, are, are you talking Stroll. about Lance Stroll? The guy yeah, that crashes I know, I know, all the time? I know what you're going to say. Yeah, he I crashes all the time. <laughs> if his dad didn't own the team, uh, he wouldn't have the gig. That is fair. There are a lot better out there, but from a consistency point of view, he's he's all right. I'm not a fan of him. Okay, I'm not. I'm not going to you know justify who he is, um, especially when he goes out and does 
different sports and decides to crash his bike and then not be able to be in the race because that's what what anyone's allowed to do but anyway yeah we'll uh we'll digress <laughs> but still yeah indycar what are you thinking well the the thing is um when when i look at the indycar drivers um i don't really know any of them anymore i mean i was like an al unser guy <laughs> johnny rutherford uh andretti and those guys, um, it, it it could be um, it, it could be any one of those guys from the Andretti teams. Um, you know, I I was into it, but I, I will have to say that with NASCAR and IndyCar the last couple of years, I can't really watch the races because there's too many yellow flags, and Formula One doesn't really have that problem for whatever reason. Yeah, if a guy's you know entire body doesn't get flung into the crowd at least once a race, then it's not fun, right? Right. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I am like watching the the Indy cars to look at Pedal Award and the McLaren team. I was kind of interested in that, but um, in general, you know, my my gaming started with the Indianapolis 500 simulation, but when a cart was disbanded and became the IndyCar Racing League. That was when the whole IndyCar thing basically blew apart. IndyCar had a much larger following than NASCAR uh, before that breakup and the creation of the Indy Racing League. Ever since the Indy Racing League, IndyCar has never been the same. Uh, now their cars don't even really look like Indy cars when you get them on the, uh, the high-speed <coughs> ovals. <laughs> You know, they, they look no, more no. like Formula E cars. Yeah, I don't like that. I, I don't like the shape of yeah. Formula E's. But yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm going to leave you with that because that's um that's a topic for another day, I think. Right. What we're here to talk about. Oh, yeah, you. right. I forgot. I, was... <laughs> I, I guess we're kind of getting into to you as well. But um again, just linking back to the to the flight sim uh, right. experiences. Do, do you expect to go into anything else like that i know that obviously you're doing quite a lot of content for legends but yeah do you want to do dcs or anything so like that? the the big uh flight sim that i really got me going in the flight sim world was falcon 3.0 and if you google that uh that game was released in 1991 and there i had the whole thrustmaster set up with the joystick the throttle quadrant and the rudders and the, the whole system was valued at right around $1,000 at the time. And that all hooked into a game port in uh, a desktop. Uh, we didn't really have much in the way of laptops at the time. So um, the game port was like an extra expansion card to fit in the, one of the slots on the motherboard of your PC. And it was, um, a, the game ports are a serial port. so. Computers back then had a serial port, which was like a nine pin connector and um, parallel port, which was um, something that like a ribbon cable connected to. And the uh, parallel port was for your printers back in the day. And the serial port was something that the um, joysticks used. And now all those joysticks that are being released today are USB and that's universal serial bus. And you know, the serial is the common thing with the game port, which was a serial port. So back in the day when, when you had a DOS system, it was fairly stable and the game would rarely crash. But now that you have Windows in between that interface, I have got too much experience in Windows, I, I guess, to tolerate the blue screen of death, which used to be a quite famous um, occurrence back in the early days of Windows, and Windows is just not a reliable system, or it wasn't, uh, for a very long time. So now, today, if there's a decent flight simulator out uh, that's running on Windows, I'm not really sure if I could really get into it that much. And I, I basically went to console just because I, I couldn't deal with um, all the patching of the... Um, device drivers and and even the games at the time which is ridiculous because now the consoles have a crazy amount of patches too but um so would yeah. you say that linux is a better operating system is that what you're trying to tell me well for certain things about what it does yeah uh, i mean uh <laughs> so 
Linux is really uh, Unix. Okay, so Unix, for anyone who doesn't know, is an operating system where you can type in a bunch of crazy characters and magic could happen. And uh, it's almost like voodoo. It's like the, the characters you type in on a command line. And Unix is really mostly all command line. And all of the um, setup files and everything that make the um, graphical display happen and that operate everything is basically a text file that's a setup file. And um, Unix is more stable. Uh, it can copy files much faster than DOS or Windows, but um, yeah, it's limited because most of the operating systems that everybody have has today is a Windows-based operating system. Hardly anyone knows what Unix is, or Linux for that matter. So what we've established is you're definitely a computer guy, but how much do you yeah. know about consoles? And how much do you like this game? <laughs> <laughs> specifically WoW, WoW's Legends. Are you are you quite into it, or is there something you don't like about it? There's something I don't like about um, Legends. Yeah. It would be um, truncated matches. Uh, I'm, okay. I'm not really into Elaborate. truncated matches, and you would think that would be an opportunity to get a win when it's only two versus two, right? But, um, but there's not XP in it, there's not credits in it and it's yeah. much shorter so yeah i i would yeah. agree would you prefer to wait longer to find something to find bigger teams yeah well that, that's an interesting thing because i think a lot of people can't um the, i i can tell you that my my thoughts about what i don't like about the game are different now that i'm a community contributor because i have a completely different situation than the average player, I, I guess. Um, you know. Uh, so, what did you think before, and what did you think after? Like now, what are your thoughts before? What are your thoughts? Well, now that you're getting a lot of content to um, a lot of material to create content for the players, I don't have to grind through a lot of things that I normally had to grind through before, right? So. Um, I'm a lot more tolerant about certain things and I have to try to keep a perspective on that when I'm creating videos um, because the average person is not going to have the $70 ship that I'm <laughs> that I'm using no, right. right yeah <laughs> so um, I have to be cool with that I have to be mindful of that I try to be anyway and um, I, I rarely will make a recommendation on whether someone should buy something I'm, I'm not really a salesman you know i'm just uh trying to give my opinion and give everybody a first look or 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 at least a, a glimpse of what the ship is all about is generally what's going on now that's a good advertisement regardless um you, d you don't necessarily have to sell i guess well, game and have you there because people listen to you, and you know that in itself is is good enough. But the the number one side to use the money. Yep. You know. Right. Right. Um, sorry, didn't mean to talk over you, but the the it's fine. Yeah. The number one thing I probably don't like about the uh, game is the mini map because I will admit that I have a hard time with the mini map where. Um, it's not always right side up. I have to like convert in my brain whether the mini map is right side up compared to my perspective. <laughs> so, would you want one that follows you around and you're not always, you know, direct north, direct west, whatever? Or, or an option to switch it like that? Yeah. Interesting. See, I've 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 tried that on other things, and it it did the exact opposite for me. It it made me experience confusion like where am i going where is what is that over here probably not <laughs> you know it was it was the opposite but everyone's brain works differently don't they so ideally um you will want the option to to do it for everyone but the main thing is that doesn't make money so i don't think it's gonna happen anytime soon uh you don't have to say that but i can because i'm not a community contributor anyway um we're going to migrate slightly into a number of questions which have been asked by both your community and the community at Back to Port. So 
uh, I'm going to start off with uh, yours. Um, so there was a, a chap who recently put a question through to you um, for, specifically for this podcast, uh, which is uh, Vic4559, uh, one of your community members, and he wanted to know, and I'm sure you know this, is HMS Line going to be coming back? I know that he asked the question, but we don't generally have any information like that. And if I did, yeah, no. <laughs> I'm fairly certain I couldn't talk about it. It's like a secret agent, right? I, um, I'm not aware of anything, uh, any news about the HMS Lion being brought back. But as we saw on, um, on the 24th of April, the Hayate and the Udachi are back. And it is for Global yeah. XP. The if the lion comes back, I'm, I'm guessing it would be for Global XP as well, but I, I have no timeline. I've never, I, I can say that I haven't heard any rumblings about that, but uh, if it does come back and you're looking for a ship that can start fires really quick, I would get on top of that. <laughs> I would pick that baby up. Ship. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it, it does take a lot of damage though, and that, that was always my main bugbear of it, plus it's firing angle of the rear turrets a bit. Uh, but the rest of it is pretty good. Its heels pretty good. Its AA is surprisingly well adjusted to uh, to the tier, so um, which is quite uncommon because all AA sucks uh, other than Friesland. So um, I do have uh, a, well, I do have a bit of thoughts on this as well. There is a strong possibility that it will come back. There is a strong possibility it will come back for free XP as well, and uh, there is no confirmation as to whether or not that's happening as far as we. Are aware so there you go that's your answer Vic if you are listening to the podcast hopefully you are uh, so next one is a poll that you actually put to your community uh, the most recent one and I wanted to know what your thoughts were on this because you put about um, the mods or the the changes in mods especially for for the higher tiers um, and basically it said that 60% well 61% of your community and I think 172 people voted um, value secondary mod over everything else yes why do you think that is uh yeah the the epic mods were uh quite fun for me i actually went through and ran all uh through and unlocked all the epic mods in a week and a half and it took like 230 matches for me to do that and so i actually took a log of all of my matches and how long how many matches each each step took and the secondary um, epic mod was by far the easiest to unlock. So um, I think a lot of people unlocked that one first because it was easiest, the easiest to unlock, and that's why most everybody probably has that epic mod. I'm not sure that many people have unlocked, or I'm not sure how many people would be a way, better way to put it, how many people have unlocked all the epic mods. So. Um, there you go. You know, I've unlocked all the epic mods, so I have to be kind of a serious player, right? I can't be that casual if I was hardcore enough to unlock all those epic mods. <laughs> yeah. So there, it, it did take a while, especially if you've done 230 battles for them. But well, I, I really struggled with the American stuff, the, the BB stuff specifically. A, a lot of people did, and it was a lot of people were having a problem with. Uh, getting citadel hits and i used the main to get the citadel hits probably in um i don't know half a dozen matches i got the 10 citadel hits so um yeah so uh you did it be, yeah it, and, and because of that um you know that's why i think a lot of people really um struggled to unlock all of them they, they weren't going to go through it and some people I know got burnt out and said that they quit playing the game for a while. Um, yeah, yeah, uh, I've done that. Yeah, yeah. It, it took I I took two months out and it was the worst two months that I decided to do it because I didn't get the summers and I didn't get the Brandenburg, but I was very close to not getting the Belfast forty three as well. I'm kind of glad that I have that now, but I really wanted the other two, so hopefully they come back for free XP. But the other side of this is secondaries are fun that's that's a given <laughs> they, they can be fun they can be fun but they have a limited use in a standard matches the, the other problem is if you're playing ai all the time 
you can almost go into a match and not even fire your main guns and do pretty well. But in standard, you have to get within, you know, 10 kilometers, and that can be kind of dicey sometimes. Yeah. And uh, when, but the when... ability, the ability to dev strike something with a Vanita within 7.9 is, it's just glorious. You know, there's there's a Fletcher there. He's just like, oh, I'm just going to be here shooting this guy, and then, bang, done. Can't live. That's what I like about secondaries. I <laughs> because gotcha. they do something that your main battery can't do. And that's constantly fire. There you are. There you go. Um, we will move on to the next uh, questions. But the next questions are from our community and some of the uh, the moderators and it, even the server host has asked, why an animal? Why the Jaguar? Why is that your pseudonym or, you know, persona? Well, back, back in the day, um, I had to come up with a... Um, a call sign and I had no idea what to pick and I, I'm assuming Jaguar was somehow because of my love of race cars and the Jaguar race cars um, I, I needed um, a call sign because I got involved in an online one of the very first online um, World War II uh, fighter games that, that was a multi um, multiplayer game. It was called Warbirds, and um, it, it was it was a free beta for like three months, and then all of a sudden they started charging uh, twenty or thirty dollars a month or something like that, and a lot of people dropped off. But for a while, um, it was uh, it was quite a lot of fun. But I, I needed a call sign, and we actually had a squadron, which is like the equivalent to clans uh, that they're talking about now for. Um, World of Warships, or or even like in uh, Call of Duty, right? Um, but uh, I, I had to come up with something, and I I wanted something that was kind of generic that wouldn't really um, identify me with like my um, my heritage or anything like that. Um, so that you see, it does also link in with your your personality um, of you know being calm right up until the. The point where you pounce on something um but that that links in with what uh, another person has said bohemud um i hope i pronounced that right i probably got that wrong but he wants to know how you stay so calm and relaxed throughout your your streams i'm assuming um because you it, it can rile you this game sometimes oh it can and um the the problem is that if you like freak out and lose it especially on a stream there's a potential that's going to last forever unless you remove the stream after after the fact. But um, yeah, I'm just probably overly cautious with how others perceive my, myself, and so I, I like I said earlier, I don't want to be that guy that's always like the hothead. But my streams do have I put a disclaimer in there that um, there could be some. Um, Strong language. I think I probably borrowed that from Spartan. Uh, you know, this stream could have um, strong language, and and that's like the the ultimate form of flattery, right? So, uh, when you borrow something from somebody like that, but um, yeah. So, uh, but you know, there are plenty of times where the controller may or may not have went flying around the room from at one point or another that um, wasn't on the stream. So I don't really stay. 100% calm all the time. It's just when, when you put something out there that you're like going off, that stays for a while. You know, um, a lot of people uh, like Mel Gibson have had incidents in their life that a very famous movie actor that he had a situation that now every time he's interviewed, they got to ask him about his drunken rant, uh, anti-Semitic rant. So, um, I'm, so what we're not saying is that you're anti-Semitic and you do rants off screen. <laughs> I understand exactly what you mean. Yeah, um, that's that's what everyone experiences. I mean, myself, I've I've snapped three sets of headsets at least in the past two years, I would say, uh, and I've got another one that I'm ready to snap right now, and another one down here that I've snapped the mic off. So, yeah, I'm um, I'm a bit more angry, but <laughs> that's for different reasons. Now, Treeline Twelve Hundred wants to know what 
are the top three things that you would like to happen within the next three years of this game, subject to there being the next three years of this game, which I'm sure there will be. Um, what do you think would be the top three things you want to see? So the, the number one thing is probably the ability to convert uh, any permanent camel that you've created uh, back into cans of paint because how many times you get like a cool golden week skin for a ship that you've already created permanent camel for that now you're never going to use that permanent camel ever again. So it is something that I guess they are aware of and I think many people have uh, put in requests for that in the feedback channels on Discord. And um, yeah, that's that's a big one I, I would like to see. Um, commander setups per ship. You, you know, uh, if you have okay. yeah. um, Tirwit set up to uh, for the Minotaur, but he's really a, a destroyer commander, I think it would be nice to be able to have a different inspiration set up for the Minotaur versus the Destroyers. And now what, what's going on when I'm using Tierwit on the Minotaurs, I just leave it with the Destroyer set up and just live with whatever inspirations are not going to help me out on the Minotaur. <laughs> okay, so, that's fine. Um, Two? I would say uh, that, um, you know, capture the base where we're... Uh, you're you're in that mode and you have to go capture the the red base um, I think it would be kind of interesting to have games where the carrier like have carrier games where the carrier is the base because everybody hates carriers and they run away from carriers when matches start with carriers I, I rarely have teammates protecting me when I'm in an aircraft carrier they just run away so if your aircraft carrier was the base it seems to me that that might help uh, your teammates protect you a little bit more because once the aircraft carrier is gone the game is over with because that's the base it's yeah. sort of like a protect the president scenario okay yeah sure but with with carriers so it's kind of like protect the lowest of the low yeah basically. and then you know <laughs> the the base being an aircraft carrier has the ability to move around too so you don't really know where the base is at any one point. So I think it could I think it could be interesting. How many people would play that, do you reckon? I think uh, the number of people that would play that are the people that well you, you don't it know carries. what you're going to get. <laughs> well, no, you don't know what you're going to get when you're in the matchmaker. Right? You could end up in one of those matches and you're you're trying to play a cruiser, but you end up, it just depends on what the matchmaker puts you in. People don't have a choice with the matchmaker. You just go into whatever you go into. I've got a great idea. Brawl with carriers only, up to three, and then see what happens. You can only use planes. <laughs> An A is disabled. Yeah, that, that would be I great. That, there's a lot of things that they can make that could be... Um, Great and or terrible for <laughs> whomever is looking at it. Anyway, uh, I digress. Next question is something that you have technically already answered. However, I haven't heard you answer it, so I'm going I'm to ask it again. Seven Rotten Days asked this question to every single person that he's ever met. Um, and I don't know how to do it, so uh, it's a type of sauce. It's a place in the UK and America. Uh, how do you pronounce wish wish dish? Wish? I can't even do it. Do you, do you know? Well, yeah, he said it was Worcester. And Worcester. Yeah, but but um, so I did not know that he asks everybody that. I thought he was being a troublemaker because there is a, a lot of instances where I have a hard time pronouncing words in general from all these ships from all these different countries. And I, I could probably make a blooper video about that, the way that I pronounce some of these names. And um, Worcestershire. Yeah, he's not targeting you. Yeah, Worc well, you got it almost. Worcestershire <laughs> is, is the way that I'm going to pronounce it from now on, because <laughs> if I know that it irritates people, that just makes it fun. Yeah, I mean, he he loves it to be honest. He he wasn't trolling you specifically. He trolls the entire world. So um, yeah, I I wouldn't worry about it too much. 
Unfortunately, I am very British, as you may have already worked out. I do know how to pronounce it correctly, and it isn't Worcester. That's, you know, we're not all from Boston, uh, okay? It is pronounced... Um, Strike one. I th- uh, <laughs> <laughs> Worcestershire. There we go. Worcestershire, okay. Worcestershire, or Worcester. Well, and it does sound the same now. <laughs> Goddamn. Anyway, uh, I will not leave any more uh, time on that question because it's just making me sound like a fool, uh, even though I might be or not. I don't know. You decide. Next is my question. Now, I ask this a lot, and I do like to know because I am also a hardcore uh, gamer, specifically relating to this game. But do you have a favorite opponent, opponent, someone who you come into contact with regularly or like to play or find hard to beat um is is that what you would would be interested in or do you not see that do you just see it's people i need to beat the people that's generally what it is but there are certain players that pop up from time to time i I do check the teams in every match to see whether there's anybody quote unquote anybody in there and um I've seen a guy named Major Precision quite often, and generally on the other team. Um, it's not really a competition thing, but I do n- notice that name. Also, in early 2021, I was running across a guy that no matter what I did, I just couldn't couldn't get him. And um, guy's name was uh, his name? Oh yeah, it was Let Him Peak. And don't uh, don't tell right. him. Don't, don't let him know about this. But that well, guy yeah. wiped me out so many times that um, yeah. So so th- I I became aware of him before he made the run to become a community contributor. Uh, it was just probably a few months before he became a community contributor. But uh, yeah. So um, now r- rarely in matches together and. Um, when when we are and I I know he's streaming I do go to a stream to see if he's saying anything about me. <laughs> I would just so. focus him. That's that's what I tend to do. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm, I'm, <laughs> which he hates, of course. But yeah, you know, you you go after the better people. I I think that it is better to take a good player off the board so there's less gun shooting at you first of all. Um, but also, it makes more sense to take a high profile one out of it as well because if others see that you know he's died already, then they're going to be a bit less happy about it. the whole, you know, kill the king or cut off the, the head of the snake, so to speak. Um, you know, I don't, I don't know. I'm talking too much. But, yeah, I, I kind of understand that. I've been up against Peak a few times in um, in Ranked specifically. And there are sections where I think, yeah, I could have done this differently. That could have beaten him. And, you know, if he wasn't sat behind that alley limb with the Dallas, etc. But, you know. We all what we sitting all behind an island? Who sits behind an <laughs> island? That would never happen. <laughs> no, no one does that. Yeah, that's, come on. That's not part of the game. Come it's on, man. Mechanic, right? Yeah. No one sits <laughs> behind an island. That's a that's a wives' tale. It um, is. Yes. Anyway, this unfortunately brings us to the end of our uh, our episode, which is unfortunate because it's been quite good talking to you. Um, but yeah, close of another episode. I do want to thank Jaguar for coming on and speaking with us. It has been quite entertaining. I hope it has been for uh, for you as well. Yes, it has. And thank you for having me. Uh, this is really a big surprise. I never thought that I would be um, interviewed on um, Back to Port uh, at all. You know, I, I would watch all those, or watch, I would listen to the podcasts. And um, yeah, they were great podcasts. I'd be very interested to uh, listen to all the content and I just never really would have thought in a million years that I would be one of the people that you'd be interviewing. So I really appreciate the opportunity. It's good to know. It's um, it's really good to have you here. You've been quite useful and everything that you've, you've said has just been quite genuine, which you like to see. Um, now, I do want to thank uh, a couple of people who do help us make content like this and help us uh, continue what we're doing, which is Seven Rotten Days, Yokosuka, Marine High School Fleet, which is also Poi, and I'm going to keep calling him Poi, I don't care, uh, and also Miss Chick, 
uh, who have continued Patreon support with us. Um, don't forget to check out the Discord if you aren't already there, uh, which is discord.gg forward slash back to port. And the, uh, the Patreon uh, will be on there as well if you want to do that. It gives you access to a load of different items, which is not necessarily seen by the public. And we do have a merch store where you can go and get yourself a nice little mug uh, or a jumper or something else, uh, which I, I can't really remember everything that's on there. Probably a pen. So there you are. Anyway, I've been D-Ribs, your host. This has been Jaguar. Thank you again for coming by. And thank you, everyone, for stopping by. See you in a bit. Bye.